Hello and welcome to module 15, the application layer. Again, don't forget to write down whatever I asked you to write down and submit them as homework. All right. I, okay. The first thing I want you to write is what is the responsibility of the application layer? The application layer of the TCP IP model, by the way, that's what we're really talking about, uh, correlates to the application presentation and the session layers of the OSI model. So um, when we give the definitions of each one of those, the OSI model, that will give us the definition of the application layer. So let's write that down. The definitions of the application layer of the OSI model first is responsible for user interface application. The presentation layer is responsible for formatting, encrypting, or compressing data. Okay, so, and the session layer is the one that's responsible for creating and maintaining a dialogue between the sender and the receiver. All right, so, so that's that. All right, network models include, so let's take a look at some of the network models. We'll discuss some of this in a few. Uh, there is the client server, server model. That's when a user or any of these hosts will request a service from the server and the server will send that request. You can request an application, a web page, an email, whatever, right? So that is a type of, um, a peer to peer. I'm sorry, a client server. So, peer to peer is what I want you to write down. Peer to peer applications, specifically, this is peer to peer directly connected. So, you have the peer to peer application, is what I'm looking for, is act as a set, they act as a client or a server for other PCs. Uh, this includes uh, BitTorrent, uh, Direct Connect, eDonkey, and Freenet, right? As if you are directly connected. So write these down, all right? All right, so now let's take a look at some, how does web server works and emails, all right? So I'm going to explain to you how a web and DNS work together. All right, so let's say this is this HTTP server is somewhere and there's a DNS. I'm not even going to follow these steps. I'm just going to explain to you and maybe a, in a little bit better way. So I want you to write the following six steps to see how uh, you, your browser accesses a web page for the first time, of course, and you'll get a law and you'll understand how that works. Okay, so step number one, the user types in the URL. Let's say you type in www. H uh, no, you type in HTTP slash slash front slash front slash www.cisco.com, right? In the browser address bar. So that's step number one. You hit enter. And the second thing that happens is the PC is going to will direct, will direct will will go, will be directed to the top DNS servers. DNS stands for domain naming services. Will be you'll go to the dot com and in the dot because you type cisco.com under dot com. This is the for commercial, all the dot com servers are there Cisco, IBM, eBay, Amazon, all because they are commercial, they are going under the dot com servers. So the dot com they look up Cisco and they'll give you an IP address, right? So the dot com DNS server will look up the name Cisco and send you to sends the destination IP address to you. And then you take that IP address as a destination and you go to that destination IP address. So the DNS server will look up the name for you and try to help you to get to give you the IP address. All right, so once you get that IP address, you go there and the client will send an HTTP commands uh, to that IP address where the, you know, that IP address should be running a World Wide Web, www.com ww right so that web server that's running ww is going to have a file in it called index.ht.html so every single web page must have a file called index.html so when you anytime you type a url ebay.com microsoft cisco.com all of these must have their own 
index.html. So every web, every browser will, every HTTP will go to and grab that index.html and bring it back to you. So the server running the World Wide Web, number five, will reply and send the index.html to the client. The client is going to read, the client is going to give it to the browser, of course, and he's going to read the codes in that HTML file, text file, and display it on the browser, right? So as you see that the DNS sends out the, um, the, actual, uh, the, the DNS helps you with the destination IP address. All you have to do is type in a name. If it doesn't find it, it's gonna give it to another uh, DNS server. To try to hopefully help you out. Remember, HTT, when, when HTTP grabs the index.html, it's coming on its way, it's coming in clear text. So you probably, you know, that's not secured. So you wanna make sure you're using HTTPS. S is for secure, that means that transporting of data is in clear text. All right, so that's pretty much how HTTP works with along with the uh, uh, with the DNS server. With the email protocols, here's what you need to know about the email protocols. The Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, SMTP, please write this down, is, is where you send your emails to. Uh, we, uh, POP3, which stands for, also write the following down, Post Office, Protocol version three, or is where, or IMAP version four, IMAP four, the Internet Messaging Access Protocol. They are both used to retrieve data. So you send your data to SMTP, you retrieve your data from POP or IMAP. What's the difference between POP and IMAP? POP, when you retrieve the data, the data is erased from the server, it's gone. But with IMAP, they just give you a copy of it and they keep a copy. All right, the DNS. Okay, so that's that with SMTP, POP, and IMAP. Uh, so I just explained it to you. Uh, with the DNS, remember, in, inside there are the top tiers in the DNS. They are called the .com servers. I think they are, let me see if it's, just give me one second. There you are. Here's the top tier, the .com, the dot, you know, this is for all networking companies organizations like AOL.net, for example, or Microsoft.net, EDUs, old schools, or MIT to Rutgers University to Stanford, and anyone that has a .edu extensions, those for educational institutes, .com is for commercial, .au, um, .co, I'm not sure, these are countries if I'm not mistaken, I think you want to, UK is for United Kingdom, and so on. So these, depending on where you are, you'll be in one of those top tier domains. And then you get the second level domain, that's with the Cisco.com. So Cisco.com, and let's say you got FTP. This is the downloading of files in the Cisco, doc, in the Cisco, in the .com. So you would write FTP.Cisco.com. And HTTP maybe will come in and grab it from here, or mail, right? So, uh, inside the DNS, just going back a little bit, there are records. A record is uh, the name that is associated with an IP address. So, you'll get Cisco.com and it'll give you an IP address. That's called a record. IBM.com with an IP address, that's also a record. Uh, all the names, where, you know, they correlate to an IP address that is called a record. So the records could have next to them um, letter A, which may indicate this record is IPv4. If it's NS, it's an authoritative name server. Quad A's, that means this is a record for an IPv6. We're gonna give you an IPv6 address. If it has MX, that means it's a mail exchange record. All the records inside a DNS, they are located in a DNS zone. So please write that down. All right, so all the DNS records are located in a DNS zone. All right, remember the DNS is the one that helps us out to get, oh, Australia is the EU, okay. All right, so moving on. All right, the NS lookup, NS lookup command. 
this is a very good command that is please write the following down because you, that is a useful utility that can help you troubleshoot uh, the network. All right, the NS lookup command is a que queries the DNS servers configured on the device to resolve a given host name. So write that down. And it's used to troubleshoot name resolution issues and to verify the current status of the name servers. All right. We'll practice some of the DNS servers in this class and in many other classes. Uh, it's a very good command to find out what your servers are. So, for example, if you do NS lookup, it gives you all the goodies about your the address, the IP address, the name of the server, and all that. All right. Uh, the DHCP server. The DHCP server is the one that leases IP addresses configuration to hosts. So write that down. Leases IP addresses at IP address configuration to hosts. All right, so here's what you need to know about DHCP. Write the following down. It leases source IP addresses for internal for an interval of time. If the interval of time expires without the client asking for renewal, the DHCP server will place the address in a pool to be leased again for someone else. Okay, so hit the pause and write what I'm telling you. Okay, number one, this is how it works. Four handshaking signals are used between the client and the server to communicate with each other. The server uses port 67 and the client uses port 68. Now the four handshaking signals are HDB discover, DHCP offer, that comes from the server, then a DHCP request, and then the DHCP acknowledge. These four handshaking signals must occur before the server gives the IP configurations to the client, such as the IP address, the mask, the default gateway, and maybe the DNS server. Also, clients, you write this down, clients use the reverse ARP, RARP, to communicate with the DHCP server. Reverse ARP is requesting an IP address for a known MAC. That's the opposite of what ARP does. Number three, that you should know about the DNS, uh, I'm sorry, the DHCP server. It, has re it can do reserve addresses. A reserve address is the DHCP will always give the same address to a client, such as a printer, Every time it requests an IP address, the same IP address, it doesn't have to pick it from the pool. That's because if you turn the printer down and you turn it back on, you want to make sure that the printer that everybody knows will always have the same IP address. So you put it in, you tell the DHCP server, make sure the following MAC address, if they come in and ask for an IP address, you give them this IP address, uh, this always this IP address. And also, the last thing that the DHCP, you can do with the DHCP server is you can exclude certain addresses from being leased. The DHCP server is called excluded addresses. So write this down also. The DHCP server will not lease addresses because re release certain addresses because someone else has it. Or maybe you configured it statically. For example, uh, if you configured the default gateway with a, an IP address, you certainly don't want the DHCP server to give out that IP address that's already been configured to the default gateway. So you make you, you exclude that from the from the pool of addresses that the DHCP server is going to lease. All right. And that's that. So we'll talk about all the others. We'll see them in practice as we go along. We'll get to configure DHCP and DNS. Uh, Hopefully within the within this CCNA program, we'll get to do all of that. And for now, just write down everything that I asked you to write and please submit them. All right. And we don't have to worry about the FTP. We'll we'll worry about that some other time. All right. So until then, I'll see you on the next chapter.